Please be advised, this podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered health, tax, legal, or professional advice. We are not responsible for any losses, damages, or liabilities that may arise from the use of this podcast. And now, I talk back with Ray. I'm telling you, I couldn't make it up if I tried. And Mandy. You've got to be freaking kidding me. You know what? That's all I'm saying. Thank you so much for joining in on our bonus episode of I Talk Back with Ray and Mandy. We have a special guest today with us, Miss Heather Wilson of Kennedy's Angels, highlighting our bonus episode of Infant Loss and Awareness Month. Ms. Heather, can you please introduce yourself and tell us about Kennedy's Angels, Angel Guest? Absolutely. Thank you both for having me. I'm yes. very, very excited. This is a big month for um, for bereaved moms that have lost children through pregnancy and infant loss. So we celebrate and honor our babies all month. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, all year really, but especially this month, we really try to paint the town pink and blue yes. for awareness. <laughs> So uh, Kennedy's Angel Gowns was, um, I guess it was birthed out of um, the loss of my daughter, Kennedy. And I'm going to actually share a picture of Kennedy. So this is Kennedy. And I don't know if you can see it very well. Right there. Yeah, we could see it right there. She is. (laughs) So Kennedy was still born at 36 weeks. I had uh, suffered from preeclampsia. And while I knew that... It was um, it it was something that caused me to have a lot more appointments and caused a lot a lot of uh, concern from the doctors. I didn't know that it could possibly lead to the death of my child and possibly my own life because I also was fighting for my life um, even after I delivered her. Mm-hmm. So uh, I I just really my mission is not only to to just honor her but to really highlight the black maternal health crisis and how serious uh, all of all of this is and how to be an advocate and to request doulas and just really, really ensure that women and babies are not dying during birth because it, it is a crisis and it's, it's, it's buzz right now, but it's, it's very, very true. Yeah. It it's very, very, very real. Long time. Yeah. Very, very real. And so, um, so started the the nonprofit and we started with making burial gowns. And so what we do is people donate wedding dresses to us from all over the United States. We get some of the most unique and most beautiful wedding gowns and we get some of the most gaudiest wedding gowns, but they all <laughs> serve a great purpose and um, they're, they're so useful in our mission. And so what we do is we make burial gowns and we give them to families for free. And I have a, a couple of examples to show you. And so for a little girl, you can see how intricate the beading is. We really try to use every piece of the gown. And so one average wow. size wedding gown will make about 11 to 15 of what we call angel gowns. And we also sometimes use bridesmaids gowns to make little suits for the little boys. <laughs> so this oh. is about a medium. And so we go all the way to micro preemie and sometimes uh, families will reach out that have had miscarriages as well. And we support everyone. And so we made these little swaddles out of wedding gowns <gasps> so that they can still hold their babies too. Cause it's really important. I mean, when you have a, a stillborn baby, the only time you're going to get is that time in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, we we just really try to ensure that 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 time is special and that there's there's someone there that's prepared to have a gown or have whatever they need any resource whether it's therapy whether it's um, funeral homes that don't charge you an arm and a leg mm-hmm. to to bury your baby we just really try to be a one stop shop to support families because what we realize is that when we went through it. We felt alone, scared. We didn't know what to do. And so as someone who's gone through it, we just really just try to have every element, everything that they would need to start this grieving process. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So um, Heather, you don't mind. Can you just tell, because obviously I'm the link between um, 
between the this episode with you um because we have a, a, a per personal and professional relationship that we developed so if you don't mind telling everybody how you came to know who i was <laughs> so how are we introduced to heather <laughs> so we were introduced through one of my very very good friends sophia who lives out in texas because i actually i live in virginia um and i was looking for a grant writer and when I met um, Rayshawn, it was just, it was a time where I was just so desperate and I was so afraid when Sophia recommended her, I was so afraid to tell her the time, the deadline of when the grant was due. When I tell you Rayshawn worked magic, <laughs> <laughs> she worked magic. She secured the grant. We got it. And she was writing for an entirely different state. I don't know how she did it. Her, uh, I, she stayed up all night. She was literally sending me documents, sign this, send this. And we were just, I mean, we were family by the end of it, but I know yes. that, um, that you wanted to shake me a little bit when, <laughs> when I asked you to do a grant in less than a week. I was like, excuse me, I, what is, <laughs> when is this <laughs> I, I mean, I will say Kennedy was on our side because yes. when you first called, it was like due in two days. Yep. And then, and then we got the, and then we got notice that they extended it for two more weeks. Yeah. And so it was still like a lot. So it was very interesting because I mean, fortunately, I was telling Amanda this, I had no experience with this. And mm -hmm. so what you didn't know at the time, Heather, was that when you first called, I had just got like the like the notice that that my I was going to be a grandma. <laughs> and so, as you know, Terrell lives right next to you, like you're 30 yes. minutes away. And I thought, Lord. And so I was telling you, I was like, Lord, OK, wait a minute. because I'm an energy <laughs> person. Right. And I thought, are you making this introduction for a reason? Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God. So I didn't want to put the energy in there. So I really didn't even talk about it. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I, it was so interesting to me. Like it was things that I had never thought about mm -hmm. I never when you and you might don't even remember this but when I because you know I always say well tell me like tell me about it like I need to know so I can be able to write right so when you were explaining to me like and I because as you were explaining to me I had the visual of you going through the infant section at the store to pick mm -hmm. out an outfit but it wasn't a good thing it was for a burial and mm -hmm. I just had the, like a, like a visualization of somebody walking through infant department to mm -hmm. pick out a dress for a burial for the for their infant and I thought man I, I had never it never crossed mm -hmm. my mind to be honest with you and so um so when, like, so when you were explaining it to me and telling me about King's Angel Gowns and the and the purpose and the mission and then I you know I got to look at the previous um, um items in the website and I saw little Miss Kennedy and I was like Lord Kennedy, you got to get me through this girl <laughs> And so I was just writing. So as I always said, man, Kennedy was on, was, was on our side. I told you that whenever we got it. So, yes. so yep. I just want to thank you for entrusting me. Um, and thank Miss Sophia, obviously, for the introduction, for entrusting yep. me to actually get it done, you know, yes. um, and secure the grant for a state I had never written for. So I had to yes. learn the EVA system, Lord. I didn't know what to log in or anything. So <laughs> yeah, we had it was so in. interesting. Yeah. And on my side, we had never secured a grant with, it, it may seem like a small amount to uh, most nonprofits, but for us, like I, I run this out of my home. And yeah. so for us, that was the largest grant that we had, had ever secured. Mm -hmm. So we're forever, plus thousand dollars. So yeah, we're home. forever yeah. grateful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I want you to talk a little bit more about um, what I didn't know about was the cradle tots. Mm -hmm. Oh my yes. gosh. So you can talk about those as well. <laughs> I saw yes. that. I'm so sorry. I saw that yes. on the site and I was just taken aback. I was like, wow. Like to know that they have those things. Cause I have gone through infant loss as well. And I was just like, I just can't, I mean, it was just amazing. <laughs> Same. Yeah. <laughs> That's when, so when we found those, we were making the gowns and, you know, everybody knew us for Kennedy's angel gowns. The hospitals were reaching out. We're sending bulk orders. Um, and when the loss happened, I went straight into just depression and just trying to navigate not having my baby in my arms. Whereas my husband, like he's a fixer, he's a man. Mm -hmm. He went into research, like, why did this happen? 
what do we have, like what supports, what resources. And so that's when he discovered in um, Europe that they had these devices. So the devices in Europe are called cuddle cots. The oh, ones that are made crazy. in the United States are called caring cradles, Amish cenotaph cradles. There's uh, two companies in the United States that, okay. that create them. And um, we started to raise funds. I mean, it was like four months into becoming a nonprofit. And I was like, we have to get one. So they're $5,000 a piece around that um, price range. And so we had a gala and uh, I think we're on year seven for that. And uh, what these devices do is we call them the gift of time. And what they do is they slow the natural death progression down. And so the, it's, it looks like a little bassinet. You wouldn't be able to tell that it's not hospital equipment. So it looks like a bassinet and inside of the bassinet, there's cooling jet, cooling jets and they regulate the baby's body temperature. So the baby no longer has to go to the morgue. The baby can stay right in the room with mom and dad um, while they're there for, you know, two days before insurance kicks you out. <laughs> but um, <laughs> they're able to hold the baby. They're able to... Um, do footprints, make memories, wait for family members to, to come in because everybody's expecting um, the new family member. And so gives folks time to get down the road and come meet the baby. And um, the baby, it, it, it has no nice way to say it, but it slows that progression down. And so the baby's um, body still will be intact and mm -hmm. they're able to, to get some good photos. I mean, you don't want to have the baby in that for days, um, longer than probably about two to three days. They say up to five, but, um, you can, some things you can't control. Yeah. Yeah. So. Sure. And then how many, um, has Kennedy's Angel Gallery been able to place in the different hospitals in your area? We're almost at 20. Um, so Virginia, North Man. Carolina, Georgia, Rhode Island. And I think that's it. Florida. That's that's yes. plenty. Yes. That's yes. amazing. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Like just, I'm, I'm telling you, I was like, I said, I said, I said you guys, yeah. you've got to have Heather on because this yeah. is such like a, a topic that is so necessary to have a conversation mm -hmm. around. But a lot of people don't have a safe space to have that conversation. Right. right. Or like, you know, I hate the term and I, and I probably have a strong word, but I really just don't like when people say, I, I understand. Because most people don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand, you know? Yeah. And so How I think sometimes people get to... Around it. Yeah. Exactly, right. So it's it's like, it's, I think it's it's interesting to have, like, to make sure that there's a safe space. There's a place like Kennedy's Angel Gallery they can reach out to if, they're, if their hometown, I know y'all ship all over the U.S., yes. um, doesn't, like, have, have the supplies or have the, the resources. Even the uh, the doula, like, I never, we were talking about it, and we were writing it in the grant for the doula and stuff like that and training. I was, I just, it was like things I didn't think about, right? So it was like, oh, I guess it would be nice, right, and essential to have someone there that that knows how to deal with with um with uh with an outcome that doesn't have the baby crying and that kind of thing right where it's yeah. a healthy you know child coming and so i thought well godly of course they need to have a doula that can deal with with uh with with loss you know so so we yeah we call them bereavement doulas um bereavement. i think prior um they were called death doulas but that's not yeah. that's not a friendly word yeah, exactly <laughs> it's not <laughs> we like to use bereavement doulas and um we train all of our doulas to be full spectrum doulas, but obviously we have the specialty of a lot of our doulas have experienced loss and want to be there to support someone else who's mm -hmm. going through, through that journey. So it's, it's special to us, but also we feel like we're working on the prevention side of, of things yes. as well. And yes. we're preventing yes. that. So we're, we're excited to have this program and it's only been like a year, but um, we're about crazy. to launch the second class of doulas in January. Awesome. So I know you've been to a few interesting places discussing this with a few interesting women of yes. influence. Can you can you talk about that a little bit, please? Yes. So um, one of the biggest moments of my life that uh, Kennedy, I guess, pushed me toward and um, guided the way was to the White House to sit on a panel with um, Kamala Harris and some other amazing, amazing women. And 
And uh, we talked a lot about the Black paternal health crisis and what um, at the White House level, what was going to trickle down and where they were going to put funding to help support and, and turn things around. So that was beyond like, you know, I always said, oh, my God, I want to be on Ellen or I want to, you know, sit down with Oprah. Um, and then God was like, what about the White House? Like, <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'll so, do you one better. I'll yeah. do you one better. Yeah. So that was it was just amazing experience. But it was also amazing to see that something that I had been through meant something to someone at the White House that they would you know, open the the forum to have discussions and to invite people and hear their journeys and hear their experiences. So I was honored, honestly. Awesome. I know Miss Amanda, like she, and um, Amanda has personal experience with this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know Amanda's story, it's heartbreaking. Um, but I know Amanda has some, she did some research on you and now she has questions. <laughs> I know I want to open the floor up to Miss Amanda. Yes, Amanda, I, I'm so sorry that you're in this club that nobody wants to be in. Um, no, yeah, absolutely. And the same to you too. I mean, it's one thing that you, it, it's a shock. It's a heart stopper and it's hard to work through um, in the moment while you're dealing with having to bury a child and go do all the processes that come along with that while you're, you know, grieving. Um, and so, yeah, I absolutely love your cause. I told Ray, when I told Ray about, you know, October is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. So I wanted to showcase that because it is a, a topic that's near and dear to my heart. And it's such a taboo topic as well, because a lot of people don't know how to talk about miscarriage. Um, sometimes people are ashamed or they're just really private and, or they don't know how to talk about it because it's right. such a traumatic, emotional thing to go through. Um, and so I was talking to Ray and she was like, I know somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and when I looked up this cause, uh, Kennedy's angel gowns, I was just taken aback because they do have things out here for parents who, you know, have babies um, that don't make it that we're not able to take out of the hospital. So they, they provide them with boxes of items so that they don't leave the hospital empty handed. Um, because that's one of the things, you know, when you're leaving the hospital, you're expecting to leave with a baby and you're going home empty handed. Right. And so I think even, even organizations like the nonprofit that you have created is just amazing because it's one less thing that parents have to try to figure out, you know, what is my baby going to wear? You know, because when we buried Embry, we didn't have her in a gown. We didn't, we had her wrapped up in a crocheted blanket. And then, you know, so that we didn't have anything to dress her with. She, we were 15 weeks. So she was really, really tiny. Um, so that cradle, or what did you have? The um, swaddle. Yeah. Swaddle. She yes. That would have been perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Because we had a second trimester, you know, miscarriage. And so something like that would have been perfect to put her in. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So when you showed that, I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> mm -hmm. that is beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. Um, but I did see, so you guys have what's called an angel box and, it, com and it, and it comes with a little a multiple items in there that's that right there was so was so beautiful so in that you have the burial garment you have a mommy and me bracelet and a crocheted item and what is that crocheted item so little booties oh. a blanket mm -hmm. a hat and then um sometimes we'll have like crocheted butterflies crocheted angels just depends on um kind of this color scheme of mm -hmm. and what we have in stock everything is 100 percent volunteer based for us but at minimum they're at least going to get a crochet blanket oh my gosh i love that and um i saw on there too are you sewing these yourself or do you have help girl <laughs> oh my gosh i have help okay <laughs> I tell people like some of my closest friends are in their eighties, like all oh, my, wow. my sewing friends. Cause there's a lost art of sewing. No one's. Oh sewing my gosh. Art. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So I started sewing them on my own and then uh, it just got too demanding. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it was like two weeks ago, we were at six gowns that we had sent out and it was the week wasn't even over. So in wow. less than half the week we had set, sent six gowns our average is like four to five um, gowns a week. Mm. And so the demand got too much. And so I reached out to some sewing groups, 
some nursing homes Mm -hmm. and uh, just put it out there on social media. Just, I need seamstress. And so we do what's called a sewing circle. Once a month, we all come together and those that can sew help sew. And in the other room, those that are able to help rip the gowns apart, the wedding gowns apart, help in that way, or they make the mommy and me bracelets. So it's a, it's a production that I could not do by myself. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that is amazing. That is so amazing. And the volunteers that you get, are they just located in Virginia or are they all over? Most of them are in Virginia. We have a couple that um, sew them and then send them mm-hmm. to us or they sew them and give them to their local hospital, but they're still under the Kennedy's Angel Downs umbrella. Okay, perfect. Um, do you sew, Amanda? Um, <laughs> I do not, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> if I did, you would have me 1000%. <laughs> I do not. Um, but wow. Yeah, I was just and then the wedding gowns. So you do wedding gown donations for these outfits for these dresses or these gowns. We do. Um, however, I will uh, also lead with this. When COVID hit, uh, we we had to stop sewing because given that most of the women that sew with us are up in age, Mm -hmm. it was too dangerous for us to get together. And so what happened was we got an influx of wedding gown donations and not enough seamstress. Mm -hmm. So right now we're holding off on donations of wedding gowns (laughs) until we can get through. We have two storages full of wedding gowns. So until we can get through that fabric, we will open it up eventually. We've opened it up once since COVID. Mm -hmm. So, um, just right now we, um, have to put a little halt on it. Yeah. Well, that is a great problem to have. It yes. really is. <laughs> <laughs> and it's wow. like thousands of dollars of just these beautiful gowns. Some of them are not even worn. Tags still on them. Just a bride who changed her mind. Um, some of them, you can barely tell they were used. Some of them are from divorces and they're like throwing them at us. Like, take this before I burn it. Yeah. So you, get, you get an assortment of wedding gowns, but they're all just so unique i love like the 80s big shoulder gowns oh, they, make, yeah. they make tons of of angel gowns because there's so much material and fabric mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah no i think that's gorgeous and then the intricacy the the beading on the gowns like yes. such detail put into that i mean and for the cause right like you're putting all this love and attention into this gown that's going to someone who really needs it and i mean it's they're just gorgeous i saw them and i was like wow um Thank and then you. ray did man- mention earlier that you guys ship worldwide or you ship just um in like domestically so we ship we've shipped outside of the united states okay. as well but what we found is we can't always get it there on time Mm -hmm. for the funeral. So when there's a hospital that wants a bulk amount, we'll ship that um, across the country. But typically we do, I mean, we get requests all the time, but we have to email the families and say, I mean, honestly, by the time it goes through customs, you probably won't get it in time. Um, And so we'll refer to other, we're in a lot of angel group networks. Mm -hmm. So we'll refer to someone that's closer to their country. Makes sense. Yeah, oh, that's man. awesome. But it's all it's I mean, that's great because you're giving them information that they probably can't at the time yeah. even fathom trying to look up, <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I had this one is, other I mean, question. I just, yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, go on. Go on. <laughs> no, um, I just had good. one I'm other listening. question. <laughs> I just had one other question. I saw on the site that you guys have um, angel baby funeral grants. Is that something that yes. you guys do all the time? Because I know I used a grant for the burial of Embry. We did. Um, I didn't tell my family that I was pregnant because we had suffered a miscarriage in February. So the beginning of the year, and then we got pregnant again. And then we suffered our second miscarriage um, in September of the same year. And so I didn't tell my family I was pregnant because of the first miscarriage. And so my family didn't know until we actually had our miscarriage. And so they helped with some of the costs, but I also got a grant, um, to help us bury her. And so to me, when I read that, I was like, wow. So do you, is that something that you guys offer all the time or? When we have funds available, we do. Um, And so we have to, um, we support it until that so we, each arm of the nonprofit has mm-hmm. funding. We support it until that arm um, runs out. And mm-hmm. 
when we run out, we definitely have had other situations where we'd reached out to other partners to see if they can help support it. But I mean, it's not much of a, a price difference for babies. Yeah. Some funeral homes will cut slack, but mm -hmm. um, it's it's so expensive and unexpected. So it's not like you have a couple grand just sitting around. So right, yeah, tough. and, and you yeah, and they just apply, yeah, yeah, and and they just apply online for that, correct? Yeah, they apply online, okay. and especially with um, with burial, that's where it gets into you know, 10,000, you know, up in numbers, but for, if you cremate, mm -hmm. it is a little bit cheaper. And that's pretty much for us. We're able to help with cremations and not with burials because mm -hmm. we just would, we wouldn't be able to support our uh, nonprofit if we did help everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, speaking of giving and grants, um, <laughs> Uh, we're going to actually feature Kennedy's Angel, um, Kennedy's Angel Gowns for um, uh, on our website mm -hmm. and in our social media channels and with the link to donate to directly yes. to Kennedy's Angel Gowns. And this is yes. a nonprofit. So, of course, you can you know write off that on your taxes. Um, yes. And we're going to certainly push it. November 28th um, this year is Giving Tuesday. And so we're going to really push Kennedy's Angel Gowns on Giving Tuesday as well. I will personally be making a donation to Kennedy's Angel Gowns. Um, and and that's after my son's, my son's <laughs> birthday, actually. Mm -hmm. My son turns 26 that day. So, yeah, so you'll see you'll see my amount come through there um, <laughs> for sure. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew we are going to be posting um, Kennedy's Angel Gowns on I talk about Ray and Mandy's website in order for you to donate to Kenny, directly to Kenny. It does not come yes. to us at all. It directly goes to Kenny's Angel Gowns. Yes. And um, we're going to obviously support this. It means a lot to me for a yes. lot of reasons. Um, Heather's a great, great, great woman. Y'all just have no idea. Even our personal conversations, she's hilarious. <laughs> um, in spite of all she's been through, she still finds joy in life. And mm -hmm. and it's you know, sad it has to happen, but um, but you know, Kennedy had a greater purpose. And this Good. is that greater purpose. So yes. I just thank you for so much, Miss Heather. Because she, Miss Heather said, I said, I need to talk to you. She said, okay, this is great. I'm like, she didn't even ask any questions. Yeah. She's like, just send me a link. I was like, okay. Yeah. So um, I want to personally thank you, obviously, for jumping on and taking time out of, of your family. I know you had earlier things you were doing today in the yeah. panel. So yeah. I thank you for continuing with us um, in your evening. Tell your husband we said hello and thank, thank him for yes. letting us borrow you and your children, <laughs> letting us borrow you for a little bit. He's watching football. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Right. Um, well, I wanted to thank you so much for joining this special yes. episode because um, this is a, a topic and a cause that we need way more attention than it gets. Yes. Um, like I said, Black women are just, I said, we're twice as likely to have a stillborn mm -hmm. child. Yep. It's just, and minority women, just the, just the healthcare in general when we're when we're pregnant, like it doesn't make any sense, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so we get more knowledge out there. Uh, we we you know we just want to make sure that we we support you and your mission um, and what you're trying to do. So yeah, we just thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate both of you. I didn't even know Amanda's story, so yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm even more excited and thrilled to be sitting. Here, speaking with you about um, something that really you can understand and yes. and empathize with. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I will be in touch with you. I'm going to send you a little yes. package so I can. Um, it's Embry. Yes, Embry. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to send you some items uh, just oh, to remember <laughs> and just to have some keepsakes. Um, I don't know if you know this, but on Every October 15th, which is mm -hmm. Pregnancy Infant Loss Awareness Day, they do the Wave of Light. Yes. So I'm going to send you one of our Wave of Light candles, too. So thank you. <laughs> yes, I do that every October 15th. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. That's awesome. Good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Miss Heather. Until we talk again. Yes. I will see you <laughs> soon. Absolutely. But, uh, thank <laughs> you so much me. for, yes. I know, I know. <laughs> thank you so much for joining in and I appreciate you more than you know. Yes. Thank, thank you so right. much. Thank you. All right. I'll be in touch with you. you. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Thank you for tuning in to I Talk Back with Ray and Mandy. Please hit the like and subscribe button to stay updated on future podcasts.